Hey, welcome back to uh, another episode of Tech Tuesday on the Educational AD Podcast. We've got a really special Tech Tuesday this week. Uh, before we meet our guests, uh, we do want to give a shout out to our podcast partners, the Global Community of Women in High School Sports, and We Coach. You've heard me say it before, and it's true. These are two great organizations that you really need to be a part of. So check out the Global Community of Women in High School Sports and We Coach. And now let's have a quick word from our podcast sponsors. We want to say thanks to our good friends at Sideline Interactive, indoor scoring tables and video boards. You heard me say before that we've got one in our gym, and it's just fantastic. Uh, we use it for home games, of course, but we also use it for pep rallies, for signing ceremonies. It's tremendously versatile, and their customer service is just outstanding. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and check out uh, what their scoreboard, their uh, score tables and video boards can do for you. You can also set up a live web demonstration. Their products not only generate income for your department, but they also create the ultimate game day experience for your student athletes. That's sidelineinteractive.com. Check them out today. We also want to say thanks to Snap Mobile. Go to snapraise.com and check out their entire suite of platforms designed to help you as an athletic director do your job better. Snap Store allows you to order custom spirit apparel for everybody in your program. Snap Manage will help you design an entire website. Snap Connect is their family engagement platform. And Snap Raise is their fundraising platform. We use Snap Raise, and it was just fantastic. And they've helped schools just like yours raise over seven hundred million dollars. They even have a program where you can get your funding before you actually start your fundraiser. Does anybody else have that? Go to SnapRaise.com. That's SnapRaise.com, part of the Snap Mobile Network. We also want to say thanks to Gipper. Go to Gipper.com and start creating custom. Uh, marketing content for your school's social media channels. You can do it in seconds on any device and you don't need any design experience. Go to Gipper.com and tell them you heard about it on the podcast. Use our code ADPOD10 and get 10% off. That's Gipper.com. We also want to say thanks to Huddle. Go to Huddle.com and see why over 200,000 teams are using Huddle to help their uh, athletes and their programs do better. Huddle is how the world sees sports. And if you go to huddle.com, you're going to find the tools to help your coaches, your programs improve. As a football coach, I used huddle for years. But when I became an athletic director, I made sure our school was a huddle school. So go to huddle.com, find out what they can do for you and your program. That's huddle.com. We also want to thank our friends at Vital Signs Wall of Fame. If you're looking for a really cool way to display your school's record boards um, for all your teams, as well as your school's Hall of Fame, go to VitalSignsWallOfFame.com. Their interactive touchscreen consoles and their templates will help you recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. Vital Signs is on a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. Go to Vital Signs walloffame.com for more information. We also want to say thanks to Final Forms, the industry leader in forms and registration, but there's so much more than that. Final Forms can help your stakeholders with things like mobile accessibility. They've got reminders for parents about policies, about physicals, and all the forms that come when you have an athlete in the house. Final Forms can also help your coaches with attendance and communication. And for you as an athletic director, Final Forms can help you with eligibility, with rosters, and all the reports that come across your desk. You know, it's time that you talk to a team that's walked in your shoes. To take the next steps, go to finalforms.com slash Jake. That's finalforms.com slash Jake and find out all the things that Final Forms can do for you. And we want to say thanks to Athletic Surveys by LifeTrack. Athletic Surveys are a quick, easy, and affordable way for you to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your entire athletic program. Typically, athletic directors only hear from the 2%, those squeaky wheels uh, that seem to want to complain about everything. 
Athletic Surveys allows you to hear back from the 98% that really love your program. This includes your student athletes as well as your parents. So go to athleticsurveys.com or email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to find out more information. If you've never used a survey to take the pulse of your parents or your student athletes, you're really missing out. Talk to the pros at Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack and let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. And we also want to say thanks to Hometown Ticketing, the leading digital ticketing provider to schools and colleges. Go to hometownticketing.com. They're going to show you how to set up and sell your tickets online. They'll show you how to scan the attendees and collect the revenue. And every step of the way, you'll have a dedicated client success manager that's providing hands-on support. That's every step of the way. Go to Hometown, and they'll also show you how to set up tickets for uh, school dances, for school plays and concerts, even graduation. That's hometownticketing.com. Simple and easy online ticketing. Welcome back, everyone, to a very special episode of our Tech Tuesday segment. And uh, there's a lot of ways to feature technology. Uh, this episode is going to be talking about the written word, the spoken word, and a great new book resource that's out there for athletic directors. We're going to be visiting with the three authors, the three creators of Leadership with Legacy. Uh, this came out uh, just prior to the start of our NADC conference. Uh, if you're not familiar with the work, shame on you. Uh, our guest today in alphabetical order, we've got uh, Rich Barton, uh, longtime athletic director in the state of Utah now, an assistant uh, assistant director, uh, executive director for our national organization, the NIAAA. Uh, we also have Carol Dosbrin, a longtime athletic director in New Hampshire, and she is the executive director for the New Hampshire Athletic Director Association. And Mike Elson, uh, the guy I like to call my publicist. Uh, Mike, longtime athletic director in the state of Tennessee, and now he is the executive director for the Tennessee Athletic Directors Association. All three of these uh, uh, great, great leaders, very active in their state and at the national level. And we're very excited to uh, have them with us today to kind of talk about the book, um, take a deep dive into some of the, the whys and, and the hows. And also, we want everybody that's listening to go to Amazon and get a copy. So uh, welcome, Rich, Carol, and Mike. Thank you, Jake. Thanks for having us. Thanks for, for sure. having us, Jake. Okay. Well, all three have been guests on um, another podcast uh, and several others. Uh, so we're going to jump right into it. Um, Rich, we'll start alphabetically. We're going to go with you first. Um, where did the idea for the book come from? Um, you know, why did you feel that this was something that y'all wanted to share? Well, our, our collaboration together... Um, began with uh, 716 uh, partnering with parents which you were also one of those key team members and and anybody who's gone through new course development which is two, at least a two-year process the efforts put in there you might as well uh, be authoring a book because there's <laughs> that much energy time uh, and uh, sweat involved that that that's what you're coming up with is something that's uh, book worthy uh, that's going to going to be passed on and and uh actually when we did the last pilot of 716 i was at uh, the indy airport getting ready to board a plane and mike called me and you know we talked a little bit about how the pilot went and uh, he also said you know he didn't want the collaboration to end and what about doing a book and um uh, and and we had had extra collaboration time with Carol with 716 uh, through that whole process and and especially through the final uh, aspects of of that new course and and it was uh, a no brainer to uh, involve her as she is uh, by far one of the most talented uh, athletic leaders in the country and and I I I threw out a, a title. Uh, to Mike for for a possible title of that book because uh, uh, 
at least in my mind, you know, there's a lot of leadership books, but there's not necessarily one that's uh, just titled for uh, education-based leaders related to, to leadership with legacy. And uh, and then that kind of got the ball rolling. And uh, since then, we have had, uh, on average, at least one, one or more Zooms a week. And uh, it's just been uh, a joyful uh, journey together, uh, you know, to, to be aligned uh, with these two close friends and uh, to, to work on a give back to the profession that we, we feel like, uh, you know, is, is going to be worthwhile to uh, coaches, ADs, uh, school leaders, anybody involved with education-based athletics. No, I appreciate you sharing that, how that whole process uh, developed. Carol, I'm going to jump to you. Um, you know, Rich is absolutely right. You know, your contributions to the 716 course, you know, particularly, you know, the resource uh, manual, if you will, you know, you had uh, some built in experience there for a book. What are your, you know, perception or reflections, I guess, about how it all came together? Uh <clears throat> As Rich said, you know, we spent a lot of time on Zoom. Um, it was at least once a week. And so, some weeks, I think we were on three times a week. And um, and if one of us happened to be unavailable um, or away and we couldn't meet for a week, it was like this withdrawal. <laughs> it was kind of a horrible feeling um, that we went through. And then, you know, we'd get right back into it. But we started with um, with a Google Doc, and um, on because you know I'm in New Hampshire and Rich at the time was in Utah, and Mike was in Tennessee. So you know all of our collaboration was either a Google Doc or Zoom. So um, it ended up that um, we had put a Google Doc together that um, was. Um, listed by lesson. All of our chapters are called lessons. Right. So they're all listed by lessons. And we would just, you know, type in something that came to mind in a particular lesson or a story that related to a particular lesson. And, and then we'd meet and we'd look and see where we had a lot of, a lot of information, not enough information. And, you know, we, we move things around and, you know, talk about, um, you know, curriculum being live, this book was live all the time because we were constantly, you know, maneuvering and, and moving things. So, um, you know, thankfully, Google Docs um, is out there and it was really a lifesaver for us. So um, so that's how we we initially got started with that. Again, uh, just the, the whole process of, of putting the book together, uh, it just I find very intriguing. Mike, um, you're going to get a reputation here as the guy behind the book. You know, you told me, um, you know, when we had done, you know, how many ever 70 or 80 interviews, you know, Jake, I think this would be a good book. And I go, really? You think so? Uh, so, you know, why did you feel that this particular subject, you know, the leadership with legacy, what what struck you, your heart, your ear, that this was a book that should be written? Well, I mean, Jake, I've told you this before, and I told Mark Hunter, you all, you, you know, you you took a risk. Um, you wrote a book. You did something you had never done before. And the two of you in September of 2021 showed all of the leadership training and state certification coordinators how to start a podcast or how to build a podcast and all of the ingredients that you need to do it. And I walked away from, I, I sat through two of those sessions and I walked away thinking, okay, they've written a book. They are showing how to do a podcast. They've taken a risk twice. You know, there's always been a vision there. Why can't I do this? Or why can't we do this? And I knew I couldn't do it by myself. So I would always, I like giving suggestions to other folks like yourself. Hey, go put this, you know, into pages in a book and, and look, Jake behind you on the screen or, are two images of two books, which is really um, very encouraging, inspiring to see. So you had a big part of the inspiration in this. And then when I was pulling away from Indianapolis, I called Rich and I'm like, I was thinking to your book, uh, you've listed the toolkit, you know, the toolbox. 
the tools inside of it. Why can't we take those tools and utilize story to show how those tools have been and can be lived out? And so that was our that was our heart. That was the inspiration. And and um, and then the journey began. And boy, has it been a fun one. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate that shout out. I don't know how much, uh, you know, really I had to do with it. Uh, for our listeners, uh, if you just tuned in, you know, we are visiting with, uh, once again, in alphabetical order, uh, a group of certified master athletic administrators, Rich Barton, Carol Dosburn, and Mike Elson. We're talking about their book, Leadership with Legacy. Uh, if you haven't got yours, you need to get it. You know, you can see mine's, uh, you know, dog-eared here f- uh, for multiple reads. Carol, um, let's jump to you on this one. Um in the book, you know, all three of you have contributed lessons. And I, I love how you incorporate that in the book, you know, your own lessons from your own experiences, but you also include a lot of contributions from other athletic directors. Um, that whole process, you mentioned the Google Docs, but um, how, you know, did you guys go about maybe dividing up or, or collecting those stories? Obviously you, you had your own stories, you know, from your own careers, but how'd you go about collecting the other stories that ended up in the book? We, um, each of us took a group and emailed, um, the people who, uh, were on our list, asked them, you know, we all sent out the same email, asked them if they would be willing to contribute a story relative to um, one of the lessons. And we had listed all, all 15 lessons and um, people sent them in. And, you know, some people said, I'm not really sure where this fits. It could fit in two or three different lessons. Um, you guys can make the decision. But some of them were, no, you know, here's a a, a story relative to culture um, or whatever it might be. So, um, and again, it was one of those things where, you know, sometimes we did move some things around because once we really got going on the narrative and um, we looked at the stories and where they would best fit in in each lesson, you know, sometimes we moved it to a different lesson uh, because, because the tie-in was a lot better. But, um, you know, we reached out to these people and, you know, they were happy to to submit. So. Yeah. Um, Mike, um, during that collection process, you know, what's, uh, you know, maybe one of the stories that uh, was submitted that as you see it, maybe it surprised you a little bit. Uh, maybe you didn't expect that particular story from this person. Uh, anything stick out for you? I, I would, I'll say this about when we receive stories, we would like forward them to each other. And we're like, can you believe this was said? Or how about how much emphasis or energy or effort this particular athletic director or athletic administrator put into the story that they were telling? Um, you know, Roy, Roy Turner, for example, the, the ABCs and the depth. And so that story or or his writings are a great example of for this book, you don't have to b- read this book from page one to 238 all the way through in succession. You can jump around. You can jump all over the place. You may need the ABCs or an ingredient of the ABCs to take with you. Um, Scott Norty's story on tra- tragedy uh, sticks out. Um, you know, thinking about the inner circle with with Don Bales and and how his, the relationships and friendships he's garnered through all the years in the NIAAA, there's just so much wisdom that we can glean from. And we want to keep telling those stories of those who've gone before us so that the next generation can understand the benefits that they now are a part of. And so that, you know, was there one story in particular that really stuck out? No, I think, and I mean this with all sincerity, all of them and the great joy again was us getting to share hey look at what trish woodkin wrote or lauren otero or lannis robinson or andy childs or whoever it might be no absolutely and i like your point about you don't have to read this book 
you know, chapter by chapter, uh, you know, the, and it, on my rereads, you know, I I've done that. I've gone back to the places I've marked and, and read, read again. And, oh, I didn't get that the first time around. Um, Rich during that collecting phase, um, you know, any, anything stick out for you particularly that you can share with our listeners? Well, uh, so many inspirational stories, uh, and, and some just fit, uh, perfect like a glove. Uh, you know, Mark Hunter, closes out the last chapter of joy in the journey with we, we couldn't have asked for a, a better closer uh with 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 his his story um i i think of uh dr makia troy from georgia you know uh dealing with the hard parent that she was so glad when that parent uh had her son graduate because it had been so hard dealing with her only to find out she had a freshman come into school the next, next fall mm -hmm. through getting to know that parent, taking the time. She, she found out a whole different lens perspective uh, about that parent. And uh, you know, there's, there's some of those things that just, just uh, are things I wish, you know, I had access to this book uh, at the beginning of my career rather than, you know, uh, to, to, towards the end, because there's so many, so many great things. And, and in most cases we had stories, but I, I think of like Phil Risen, he didn't, he didn't share one story. Mm -hmm. He shared a bunch of, uh, examples of different things he saw throughout his career and, and were blessed, uh, in that particular, uh, lesson chapter to have Phil's takeaways on, uh, a variety of things. I think of Dr. Mike Blackburn, who uh, had a, a former uh, student contact him 30 years later, I think it was, uh, of the influence that Mike didn't even know he had on this individual. And there's so many inspirational uh, stories. There's a uh, combination of narrative stories and, and examples and quotes that, uh, you know, apply to us in, in the most important aspects of education-based athletics. And, uh, and that's, I guess, what I'm most appreciative of uh, having the variety of stories and, and combined with, uh, you know, all of the meat and nuts and bolts in the book. Yeah, um, I, I really like how you t you talked about the idea of, of giving back and sharing. And uh, I remember, you know, when when I first started doing the podcast and we're collecting the tools before we even thought of a book, I just remember somebody would be sharing, you know, like a Mike Elson. I'd just be writing it down. Boy, I wish I knew this, you know, 25 years ago when I first started my career. And, and we've heard that comment so many times. And there's been a lot of, uh, they're all good. Please, uh, there's been a lot of books come out in the last couple of years from our colleagues and our peers, and they've all been wonderful. Uh, but it's all part of that, you know, sharing and giving back. And uh, I'm going to start this next segment off kind of on your coattails here. Uh, you mentioned Phil Risen and, and his contributions, Phil's takeaways. I already used one of those uh, a couple of days ago when I uh, was promoting um the the book and in one of our new features was that uh um and i'm not paraphrasing here but i'm shortening uh phil said each day is a day to improve and you know that that's what we're trying to do we're just trying to get better you know as ad's we're trying to get better we're trying to help our coaches our kids sometimes our parents get better too um this next segment um I, i'm not going to ambush you here but uh, uh i've written down uh, looks like I've got about uh, six or seven different snippets from the book. Uh, I'll give you who contributed it and I'll give you, you know, the uh, just maybe a one or two word description. And then hopefully y'all can take turns, maybe sharing a little bit about that one and uh, and your thoughts on it. So uh, let's see. I, I think, Mike, you're up first. So um, I just did Phil Risen's uh, Dave Ticker from uh, the Washington State uh, you know, association. He shared a story about when he was a young coach, like many of us, I know it was true for me. He thought he knew it all. Uh, do you remember that story? And what are your, uh, what's your reflection or, or commentary on that one? 
Well, I think, Jake, that's a great example. And all of us have great respect for Tick and the the way he carries himself. He is truly one of the most respected leaders that we have in the nation. And to think like a rookie is the reminder or the takeaway. So we want young athletic directors and young coaches to see, read that story, take lessons from it, but ha but for those of us who've been in it for a while, let's keep thinking like a rookie. Let's stay hungry. Let's pursue the unknown. Let's promote the unseen. Um, let's build courage in the young administrator or coach so that they don't, you know, go into the business world and leave education. That was one of the goals of this book is that we want you to see joy in the journey. So that can be, you can overcome maybe some weakness like Tick mentioned and work through that and come out, you know, 30, 40 years later as the executive director of your state association, like he is in Washington. And I'll say this about Tick as well. He is, he is a, him and uh, Mick Hoffman, who's the executive director of the state activity association in Washington. They have one of the best relationships in the country between the athletic director association and state activities. So Tick has overcome all of those early lessons from being a young coach to now demonstrating or having a great example of what it can look like uh, for positive collaboration on behalf of education-based athletics. Wow. That, that, and it should great. be mentioned with, with, with Dave. D Dave is a very close personal friend and former teammate with, with my favorite uh, player of all time, John Stockton. Him and John are doing stuff all the time. And so the circles he's been in, you know, he could have treated that situation with a lot less uh, humility than he did. Right. But it was the humility he had that allowed him to uh, persevere and learn. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. He really did share, you know, those, um, you know, that that whole story. And again, you got to read the book. You just got to read the book. Um Rich, um, your uh, your ambush, uh, you know, topic here, uh, you know, same idea. Uh, Andy Childs, you know, our own Andy Childs, executive director for uh, FIAAA, and really somebody that that I know kind of pushed me along and helped me along uh, in my NIAAA journey. When he was the NIAAA president, I know he moved my name up on uh, committees and things like that. And I, and I thank him for that. He shared on the, uh, I'll just say the theme of authenticity. So uh, do you remember that? And, you know, what were your thoughts as you were first reading that, uh, um, that uh, contribution from Andy Childs? Well, uh, a lot of respect. And he was one that I asked for the story uh, from, and uh, he was, uh, uh, past president when I was president elect in the NIAAA presidency and no, no one I respect more than Andy, but I appreciated, uh, you know, especially when he talked about the NIAAA culture, you know, he's, he's seen, uh, he, he's seen Dr. Blackburn and Phil Risen and the PDA team on their hands and knees, uh, duct tape and cords, uh, you know, doing, doing the dirty work. And uh, in a nutshell, to me, he, he described how uh, the top levels of the NIAAA puts themselves at the bottom and puts their membership at the top. And those of us that have been ingrained in the, the NIAAA culture, we know why it's unique. It's because of what's been set through the years by by leaders like Bruce Whitehead, Dr. Blackburn, Phil Rise, and uh, Jim Watkins, Don Bells, you know, and the list list goes on. And so, you know, I, I appreciate how how well he put that. Even though he he starts off by saying, you know, I'm not an English English uh, guy, and a little bit of hesitancy to share, as we all have, have had in some respects, as my as I've mentioned, my eighth grade English uh, teacher is rolling over in her grade when she sees my name next to an author. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, that's what I liked uh, how Andy, you know, mentions that as far as uh, especially heavy on the authenticity. 
Right. Mm -hmm. right. No, very cool. All right, Carol, for you, um, and just the luck of the draw. Uh, you know, one of my good friends, uh, Dustin Smith from Arkansas. He talked about uh, a, a meeting that he had uh, that was just five minutes long. Uh, do you remember that one? Am I am I catching you off guard with that? Um, I think I remember it. Um, oh, yes, I do remember that story. Okay. I do remember that story. Share, um, share a little bit with our listeners, uh, you know, kind of, you know, set it up a little bit. And then again, your takeaway from that. Um, let me see. If, if memory serves me right, um, it was a, yeah, let me, let me comment on, on, uh, the Dustin Smith one. That was one that I had uh, asked of Dustin, but he, he had his football coach who, who lives to a, a strict timeline, asked Dustin for five minutes and, uh, came in and and uh all of a sudden after a little while of discussion his football coach just got up didn't say a word and left exited the room and and Dustin uh went to uh, another supervisor and said I, I guess I really I really ticked off coach so and so he just he just took off on me and we we hadn't finished what we were discussing and and that individual uh, enlightened Dustin uh, a lot more about that coach. And he said he he has practice and, and everything in his life according to a, a time schedule. And if he asks somebody for five minutes, he's not he's not going to take more than that amount of time of somebody else's busy schedule. And uh, Dustin kind of relates how impressed he was with that individual and as he got more and more familiar with him, he, he could see because of his organizational habits and self accountability, why he was uh, the successful coach that, that he, that he was. Yeah. I, I was very impressed with Dustin's response. Initially he was, you know, he was, you know, he was kind of offended. He thought he might've offended the coach, but he came away just being so respectful of someone who respected his time that much I, I asked for five i'm not going to take five minutes and two seconds i'm going to take five minutes and then we're going to move on so yeah, we all know we all, we all know that coach that says hey all i need is two minutes <laughs> and then uh, about uh, 40 minutes later exactly <laughs> it, it, it's like the parent that says you know hey do you got a minute well it's never yeah. a minute so you go okay <laughs> uh, it's not about playing time well it's always about playing time so yeah exactly <laughs> All right, Carol, we're going to jump back to you. Um, our good friend, uh, Todd Olson, from North mm -hmm. Dakota, uh, he shared a really uh, very cool, and they're all cool, but it's very cool about uh, our educational experience and how athletics impacts on that. Uh, can you share with our listeners, you know, that story and then your takeaway from it? Sure. Um, you know, when uh, Todd was meeting with um you know, school board and community members, you know, he would always ask them, um, you know, what kinds of athletic experiences did you have in high school and what kind of an impact did that have? And people would always respond, you know, how wonderful it was. And, you know, it had, it played a, a huge role in their life and got them to where they are today. Um, you know, and then he would always say, you know, well, if the athletic budget is only a a very small percentage of the overall budget and you know this had such a huge impact why is that so um you know in a, in a kind of you know I'm, I'm not sure what chapter that story's in but one of our chapters is they don't know what they don't know and um you know and it's about educating people that you know the the amount of time that coaches spend with um with student athletes is, you know, 10 times what a classroom teacher does and the impact that that person has, the impact that athletic administrators have over kids because they're there all the time for them. So, um, you know, when you look at what the percentages of, um, of allocations that go to uh, the athletic programs 
in, in our schools, you know, it certainly does not measure up to what the impact is. Oh, a- absolutely. And it, it was such a simple way to express it, but just, I mean, just one of those wow moments that, you know, boy, we, we should have all been using this, uh, you know, when we're talking with parent groups or board members or uh, sponsors, you name it. Great, great stuff. Um, I want to get into uh, a little bit of the nuts and bolts of, you know, the, the writing a book, not the less, not the sexy stuff that we've been talking about, but uh, you know, kind of that grind. Um, uh, and I guess, Rich, we're back to you. So luck of the draw. Um, explain to our listeners uh, just a, briefly um, the steps to going from collecting these stories um, you know, editing, obviously you're going to create your manuscript, but what do you do that? How do you, how do you publish a book? You know, I know how I did it, but how did you, all of you get your book published? Well, and, you know, being first timers and, and maybe you found this out with your first, first, uh, 80 toolbox, but, you know, we, we had compiled, uh, what we thought was pretty close to final uh, narrative and stories and, and final product as we came down to August. And there's a whole lot more involved with those final stages of, of the rollout with the publishing. And, uh, you know, and Carol is, is the MVP of, of the team and, and all that she, she did. In fact, uh, Scott t- Jarvis told her she, she probably could have saved him thousands of, money that he paid for 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 somebody to help in in some of that final process but um we we uh looked into the publishing end of of things and actually uh an education leader that i'm familiar with uh i think he the publishing company he purchased and he's an author of numerous books i think we could have gone that direction but also a, a publisher uh, will oftentimes want to control uh, content among other things and uh, and also look at it from the money making aspect. In fact, uh, we were even told, hey, there's three of you, you're not going to make any money. And, and our response is, we don't care. That's not that this project wasn't uh, money driven. It was uh, give back driven and uh, and so that's that's also why we went with Amazon is is we we stayed in control of the content and uh, and, and and a lot more to the the rollout timeline that we we had in mind and uh, and and as mentioned Carol has done some amazing things with designing the cover uh, the pictures that go along with each of the 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 lesson uh, chapters. And uh, and we, we feel like it's a professional uh, product, uh, you know, and uh, it's something we're, we're pleased with with the with the end pro- product. Oh, no, absolutely. And I can relate to that when, you know, when we did the the podcast presentation, you know, the first showing of the tools and, and Mike, uh, you know, said, you know, hey, this would be a great idea for a book. I literally got on the computer and typed in, how do you publish a book? And a couple of, uh, well, there were probably a dozen or more self-publishing platforms came up, including the Amazon one. And you mentioned Scott, you know, uh, you know, I was seeing all the things that Scott was doing. I'm going, I'm not doing any of that stuff. You know, uh, am I doing it wrong? But uh, yeah, the Amazon platform was just so easy to use, uh, so streamlined. Um, you know, Carol, uh, you know, what's what's your take of that whole publishing phase of you know getting the manuscript uploaded and again the Amazon platform designing the cover and all that. You mm-hmm. know, uh, what sticks out for you um, uh, that you can share with our listeners? You know, it was it was a lot of fun to put the cover together. And, you know, every time I added something to the cover, I'd email it to Rich and Mike and say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What what color do you want? And, you know, uh, I think one night we were on for two hours and I was just because uh, I used Canva. And um, mm-hmm. so, you know, I'd say, OK, what do you like for a background? How about this? How about that? You know, so. 
you know, we kind of mixed up the the hardwood with the red brick, you know, so we, we gave it that education kind of look and, uh, and the hardwood look for, uh, for athletics. But, um, you know, that was, that was all fun. It, I think the toughest part of the upload was making sure that um, the cover fit. Um, you know, that was the one that was probably the toughest because once the manuscript um, is done and you save it as a PDF, um, you know, you upload it and that's not a big deal. It's It's really getting the cover right and making sure that um, you know, the front and the back of the same size, exactly. And, um, and the binding, um, is the right size because, you know, if your book is only a half inch, you can't have a binding, uh, title that's an inch and a half. So, um, you know, so it was, that was probably the toughest mm -hmm. part, but, mm -hmm. you know, once you get it done, it, it works. Yeah, yeah, your your binding uh, came out better than my binding. I, I maybe I need to hire you to, uh, <laughs> you know, be my my copywriter or whatever that term is. Um, Mike, uh, on the publishing end of it, uh, I'm going to give you the hard question. You've collected all this content. How do you go about editing down what ends up in the book? Uh, were there any? Uh, um, and again, with me, it was you know, easy. There's just one person. Now I did have uh, several athletic directors. I sent them copies to kind of not so much proofread, but yeah, proofread. And, you know, what do you think of the style? Is this a good idea? That sort of thing. Um, how did you guys uh, decide on what actually ended up in the book? Any, um, any big arguments? Oh, we got to include this story. No, we already did that. Uh, what sticks out for you from that experience? Every story that was submitted, it was a no brainer. I mean, it was just they, we felt like all of the stories were written from the heart with experience for the betterment of the student athlete. And so we didn't really want to touch any of the stories. Um, the one of the things we really enjoyed that I don't think Richard Carroll mentioned was, you know, selecting the images at the beginning of each lesson, along with the quotes. We felt like that was a really important part and gave us you know, a through line. And if you're a leader and you're trying to get ready for a, a coaches or, a, you know, coaches meeting, or you're a coach, you're getting ready for a team meeting to be able to go to a certain page and pull a quote from one of the leaders that we listed, we felt like that was a simple takeaway, but one that could be had. And so Carol truly rich said it, she's the MVP of formatting. Um, and what's interesting, Jake, maybe, you know, this, you know, the spacing, some of the way that you have to fit inside of a word doc, um, it may look like there's three spaces between words when there's really only one, but trying to frame it up. And then, you know, the normal block set versus the italicized stories. What, how do we title each individual? All of those things that took a lot of time down the stretch. And then I, I really mean this, this is sound like, yeah, you should have already done this, but crossing T's and dot and I's and putting commas in. And, you know, for all of us, we think athletic administrators should be capitalized every time you see it. But if you go, <laughs> if you go to a grammatical editor, they're going to say, no, those are lowercase a's that should be tied in so many situations. So we learned a whole lot. Editing being the, I'd say the biggest challenge of all, not the selection of the stories, um, a lot of them, we just felt like they fell naturally into the different lesson sections within the book. But I would say the editing is what took, you know, the most time, at least from my perspective. Mm -hmm. I, I think one of the other things is that we also, um, you know, we had talked about, well, we want to make sure we put this in and we want to make sure we put that in. And then we got so caught up in the narrative or, you know, placing the stories where they belong that we forgot about some of those things that we had talked about. And one of those things was lessons learned, you know, because at the end of, of um, each lesson, uh, we have three to five, six to eight bullets of lessons learned summarizing the chapter. And it was one of those things where we said, wow, we talked about that. And that was, that was really a big deal that we wanted to make sure that we summarize things. 
And, um, you know, so, but you get so caught up in what you're doing, you know, that some of those things escape. And I know we all had notes and then we'd go back through our notes and say, oh yeah. And what about this? You know, so, uh, but. And we did try to have uh, representation through all, all of the country uh, as far as some contributing stories and not only that, but uh, our our friend and colleague from Seven Sixteen, Kathy Tango Ong from the, from the Philippines, we have international representation too, and uh, you know, and it's it's been fun to you know hear, hear comments from executive directors of state associations, district ads, and and ads say, "Hey, I'm putting this in the hands of all of my people, all of my coaches, all of my." my ADs and uh, because they feel it's a valuable enough uh, resource for, for them to refer to. Oh, no, again, absolutely. I can't stress enough, you know, what, what a great collection of, uh, you know, life lessons, lessons learned, you know, for the athletic administrator, you know, veteran or, or newcomer alike. Um we're going to do this uh, at the end of this particular episode, but um, I'll, I'll be Captain Obvious. Uh, you know, Rich, if one of our listeners wants to get the book and they haven't done it yet, what's the easiest way for them to get the book? Well, pull, pull up Amazon and type in the search box, Leadership with Legacy and Education-Based Athletics. And it'll it'll pull up the book and... Uh, for what we feel is a, a reasonable price of $14.99, uh, there's a resource for every coach, every AD. We hope uh, school leaders uh, and anybody uh, that has any kind of interest in education-based athletics. Uh, we even feel like uh, teachers, anybody who is a leader, there are things, there, there are golden nuggets, there are things to be gleaned and utilized uh, from the book. Yeah. And, and again, state association, you know, leaders, if you're listening to this, you know, we're always talking about how do we help our constituents? You know, how do we help new ADs? How do we help the people that we're trying to serve, you know, order a bulk of these books and hand them out at your state conference. You know, what, what a great resource to give to your athletic directors that are coming to learn more. So, uh, again, uh, our guests today, uh, Rich Barton, Carol Dosbrun, and Mike Elson, all certified master athletic administrators and the authors of Leadership with Legacy. It's available on Amazon. We're not done yet. Uh, we've allowed Rich and Carol and Mike to kind of share um, you know, their take on the book, even some of their favorite stories. But now I'm going to ask them to uh, share my favorite stories from each one of them and uh again we'll go alphabetically so rich um you share and again the buy the book buy the book leadership with legacy um one of your stories you talked about um not just one manager but actually uh two managers you know for your basketball teams tremendous story uh can you share that with our listeners now yeah, uh, in fact, it's funny you should bring that up because, uh, you know, one of the last people uh, we visited before making the 23-hour drive uh, cross-country to our new home in Indiana was uh, the one manager who who now is getting old enough to, his, his uh, son will be coming into high school fairly soon wow. uh, back, back in our hometown, but you know, one of the things uh, I always had a goal as a basketball coach and, and, and even a goal as an athletic administrator is to kind of drive out the feeling of entitlement with athletes because uh, too often there's even that stereotype, but all, all too often it, it exists too. And uh, so we, we would try to do things like uh, every, Every season, we would do our own sub for Santa program and find out uh, if we had some high school students who, who uh, came from families desperate with needs, and and we would we would take care of Christmas for for some of our fellow students and their families. And uh, but one of my all time 
favorite stories was, and you don't have enough time to hear it here, but a young man that had been passed around from family member to family member and uh, uh, the captains on the team and myself uh, took him and uh, let him be our manager as long as he had passing grades. And uh, prior to that time, he failed everything in his previous schools and at our school and uh, short, short, make short, uh, you know, he, he went on to uh, pass all his classes, be one of the first graduates from an extended family of many and uh, uh, school rallied around him. He was a junior prom king. His senior year, he was elected to the student Senate, uh, went on and, and served a, a church mission for two years, uh, still has his own challenges by his own admission, but uh, he's in a he's in a great, uh, much greater path in life because some uh, participants took him in and rallied around him, and so that's uh, that's one of my favorite stories, and uh, you know, and it was a be it was a blessing to be a part of it. Yeah, again, and for all three of these stories, and there were others too, I, I, I'm not exaggerating. I'm, uh, you know, you know, my wife's going, is that something in your eye? I said, no, I, I'm not crying. You're crying. Uh, <laughs> just great stories. And again, Rich, that doesn't happen. The, those kids on your team, they don't um, embrace this young man without some leadership and without some impact from you as a, as a coach and a leader. So it's just, a, it was a great reminder about the power that we have as leaders, uh, the power to do good things. Okay. All right, Carol, you're next. Boy, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not crying. You're crying. Uh, yours was uh, very personal for me because there were some similarities. Uh, the story that, that you shared, one of the stories you shared was back when you were in high school uh, or in school, and you were getting ready to choose a high school and in the conversations that you had with your father. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you share that? Okay. And I promise I'm not going to cry. Sure. Um, I, um, I had applied um, to go to um, some local parochial high schools. And at the time, well, I think you probably still have to do so now, uh, but they had an entrance exam and you had to list uh, which schools you wanted um, to be considered for, you know, and upon passing the exam, um, then you could let them know that you were interested. So, um, so of course, you know, you always go into these, I always went into these exams really nervous and, um, but um, the, the letter had come and my mom was in the kitchen. I opened the letter and, uh, uh, I had passed the exam. So I had already made up my mind. I knew where I wanted to go. But, um, you know, so I talked to my mom about it. And she said, well, you have to talk to your father. So, um, you know, I got really nervous. And so she said, he's out in the garage. So go have a conversation with him. And um, um, my, um, my mom and my brother and I are Catholic, but my father was Russian Orthodox. So um, when my mom wanted us to go to parochial school, you know, she had told my dad all the all the reasons why. And, you know, he was like, you know, that's fine. If that's what you think is going to be good for the kids, that's fine. So we had gone through eight years of um, parochial um, education and um, and I wanted to continue. I, I felt that um, a smaller scenario um, I could thrive. Um, I would be able to, um, participate more in, um, some of their offerings as opposed to the local high school, which literally was in my backyard. Um, and I was going out of state, which we lived on the border. So, um, but you know, it was like 15, 20 minutes, but, um, but I, I just thought it was, it was a better opportunity for me. And, uh, so I had this conversation with my dad and, and, um, you know, I told him I passed the exam and he said, now what? And I said, well, this is where I'd like to go and told him all the reasons why. And, um, he said, I had to promise him that if I wasn't happy there, that we would find a school where I would be happy. And, um, so fast forward, 
to um I think it was the fall uh the spring no the fall of late fall of 2011 and I shared that story with um a couple who had come in to meet with me because they had sent their son to a parochial school he wasn't happy there and after his freshman year he wanted to um he wanted to change schools and go to the local public school and they said no 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 it, you know it fell on deaf ears and so it ended up that um by the time uh they had met with me he was a junior and um he you know wasn't thriving the way that they had hoped so they finally saw the light so they came to school checked out a lot of things and obviously checked out the athletic department so when i shared that story um it obviously hit home and I really didn't realize how much it had hit home until um, a couple months later, my dad passed away and um, his wake was a four hour constant line. And, you know, it's a big blur, but I looked up and I saw this couple and I'm thinking, wow, those people look, <laughs> look like that family. And, um, and it was them. And I was shocked, you know, they came to me and expressed their condolences. And I was like, why are you here? You know, I, I didn't say it that way, but it was, I was shocked. I couldn't believe that, you know, they, they would come and they said, you know, um, the story that you shared meant so much to us and, you know, helped us to understand what we needed to do for our son and our son's happiness that we wanted to come and pay respects to a man who put his his daughter's happiness and others happiness at the forefront so so it was um it was uh so touching to me that my father all those years later had such an impact on these people and this this boy that they didn't even he didn't even know and never met you know so um but it's it's amazing how the stories that we tell, and this is you know why we wrote the book. Um, the stories that we tell have such an impact on people, and um, I think I'm going to get a little welled up here, but um, you know, but it does it 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 means a lot, and you know I think it's stories are are things from the book that people will remember. Yeah, again, the, the the whole word, you know, both those stories and, and Mike's, I think yours is, is going to be too, uh, just it personifies legacy, you know, the legacy you had with your dad, the legacy that you helped create with this young man and his parents. Um, great, great stuff. All right, Mr. Elson, um, the story I picked out, uh, well, one of uh, many, like for all of you. Um, was the story you shared about Gordon, the public address announcer. Okay. So can you share with our listeners uh, that particular contribution to the book? Gordon Moe, I would encourage any of you to, to look him up that are listening to this podcast. Um, he is a well-celebrated um, behind the scenes music producer, performer. Um, Gordon it, it blows me away because he's never been able to see. And so we collaborated, he and I, and he's like, Coach Elson, we want to use, let's use my story to help other people that when they're feeling sorry for themselves, look at a blind man and be reminded that you have eyes to see. And he would all the time, we'd be watching a game together. And he's like, Coach Elson, did you see that play? And I'm like, Gordon, what do you mean see it? Yes, I see it, but how how can you frame it up that way? And he's like, well, you know, for me, listening to radio broadcast my whole life, having the picture painted for me of whether it be a PA announcer, a TV announcer, a radio announcer, he said, that's how I've learned to see sports. And he loves sports so much. He loves Alabama football, really loved where, you know, I just retired from CPM June 30 and 22. And He's like, um, you know, we went to him and he was he was announcing baseball games. He was trying to figure out where can I help? How can I serve the school that my three children attend? And so he started announcing baseball and baseball is a lot slower. And so he was able to keep up and you got to have a Braille writer. 
uh, he had to have his braille writer and he had to have somebody there as like a spotter. All right. That was, you know, strike one low and away. And then he would announce it. Well, he, to me, he wasn't slow. He was really quick. And our football announcer had retired. And I'm like, Gordon, what do you think about, you know, being our football game announcer? And he's like, well, I love football. And so we ended up having three or four spotters around him up in the press box. We would get him the rosters before and he would put it all in Braille. He would become familiar with all the names, the coaches, the records, um, a little bit of the history about the um, the visitors. And by the way, one of my favorite things about Gordon, he was not a Homer announcer. He made sure and paid respect to the visiting team. They're our visitors. They're our guest, not so much the opponent. And so with the help of others, which Gordon wasn't afraid to ask for, um, he announced football for us. And it's really a phenomenal story, but an example that all we've got to do is look around the corners in our communities and there are people trying to figure out how they can help. They're just waiting to be asked, even if they're blind or if they can't walk or whatever, they can contribute to education-based athletics. And that's what Gordon Moat uh, brought uh, for not only our school, but an incredible positive uh, perspective for me. Yeah, again, just all three of those stories, just scratching the surface of a great, great book. Um, we've been visiting with the authors of Leadership with Legacy, Rich Barton, Carol Dosbrun, and Mike Elson. Uh, it's available on Amazon. Go to Amazon.com, type in Leadership with Legacy. Let's do some closing thoughts. Uh, you know, Mike, the book's been out now for, uh, I'm going to say, close to a month, Hey. Okay? Um, you know, anything, uh, that maybe didn't get in the book that you'd like to add or, or just thoughts about the whole process. Um, you know, this is your, your final word on the podcast today. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, there was a couple of letters that were shared with me from former players upon my retirement. And I was really struggling whether to share them or not, but felt inspired to do so. So ran it by Carol and Rich and they're like, that speaks to transformational coaching. It speaks to legacy. It speaks to, we may not see it 10, 20, 30 years down the road. We may never see the impact on the students we're called to lead. But one of the beautiful outcomes of the book is that I have been in contact. You'll never know their names because I had to leave the stories anonymous because they're pretty raw. Um, they're pretty, they're, there's some broken um, statements in there. Um, but I made contact with both of them and one lives in Colorado, the other in Mississippi uh, actually had, um, you know, lunch with one of the former students a couple of, a couple of weeks ago here in Nashville. And we had not seen each other in over 20 years. So that for me is a personal outcome. And in my encouragement to everyone listening to this, whoever reads the book, um, just remember that uh, true success is in the unseen and it's through the lens of relationships. Uh, uh, again, appreciate you sharing that and all the other stories in the book. Carol, uh, final words from you about, you know, the book writing process or just, you know, something that maybe didn't get into the book that you'd like to share with our listeners now. Well, I, you know, we were very intentional about um, um, creating these titles, these lessons, um, we were very specific about what we wanted to include in the book. We were also very intentional about the order in which we put those um, lessons. So um, the front porch obviously starts um, and joy in the journey um, is the concluding lesson. And everything in between is something that um, you know, people can, can take from and learn and practice, um, you know, and, and it shows each one of those lessons is, uh, speaking to your legacy and how you react when things are, are tough and, you know, how you learn, um, when things are tough. And, uh, so I think that, um, you know, everything that we did, um, you know, choosing pictures, choosing quotes, as Mike had mentioned earlier, um, and, 
um, ordering, ordering the, the lessons um, was something that, you know, we took great pride in doing uh, so that, you know, you don't have to read chapter one followed by chapter two or lesson one followed by lesson two. Um, you can pick a lesson that you may be struggling with in your school or your athletic department. If culture is an issue in your department and you want to have your coaching staff focus on that, you know, if you're doing a book read with coaches, you know, that's something you could focus on. If um, relationships is an issue, you know, you could, you could work on that. It doesn't have to follow in chronological order. Um, and it, it, it's a quick read, but I, I think that, you know, this, definitely something in each chapter and those lessons learn I learned at the end I think will really help people to um, to summarize what it is that that they just read and I think the more you read it and the more you study it um, you know the more you'll enjoy it yeah I, I'm so glad you mentioned the uh, the front porch aspect you know athletics is the front porch of the school that's how important our job is as ads and then you sandwich that at the end with you know enjoying the journey and enjoying what we do you know life is too short to you know be miserable you know you should enjoy what you're doing great stuff and uh you also talked about the book study so athletic directors you're listening get a dozen get 14 get 20 copies of this book do a book study with your own coaches you know help them with their own legacy of leadership so uh great job carol rich i'm gonna let you wrap us up um you know final words about the book uh you know uh anything you want to leave our listeners with and again listeners go out and buy the book <laughs> so one of the the uh, kind of already alluded to one of the most enjoyable aspects was uh, the collaboration with with Carol and Mike and uh, the continued uh, growth of our our friendship. But as we we started this and had the the lesson titles, uh, for me it brought immediate uh, career reflection, where all of a sudden uh, stories and experiences and examples that I hadn't even a lot of them hadn't even thought about or reflected on in a long time, and so that. Uh, was was quite a blessing to be able to to have some reflection and then you know I didn't know when we started this project would have never imagined in a million years that uh, I would be doing a podcast from a new home in, uh, <laughs> in Noblesville Indiana but uh, you know through through my months with the move uh, this fall and things it's it's kind of been a full circle thing of of emotions and and reflection on a 29 year career and in one place. And, uh, you know, it's just been a, a great thing to uh, think of examples from the past. And they're not always positive. Uh, you know, uh, we, we, we share things that we learned the hard way, um, things that hopefully prevent other people from having to, to maybe learn the hard way and things, but there's so many uh, self-assessment uh, lessons throughout that we can all, uh, hopefully uh, latch on to uh, for uh, the ultimate goal of benefiting our participants and, uh, you know, making sure we're, we're doing education-based athletics the way it's supposed to be done. Yeah. Again, great, great stuff. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you to all three of you for your friendship and support uh you know of, of me as an ad you know as um, on niaa committees um you know state coordinator meetings and the 716 course uh I, I say with great pride that uh from a professional standpoint other than serving as our state association president uh my final year as an ad working with you know the three of you and the rest of our team on uh helping create the 716 course was certainly the the highlight, the high highlight uh, of my NIAAA career. So thank you for, for that uh, opportunity uh, to be a part of that team. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Jake. Thank you and thanks for your your author and inspire inspiration to, to us and, and others of, uh, you know, stepping out of a comfort zone uh, for, for a give back to, for the good of all. Mm. Well, 
you, yeah. you, you're too kind as I, I say, and I say this sincerely and you know, it, it it's hard work, but you know, writing the book, it's so easy. Even Jake can do it. Okay. So, uh, you know, if, if you're listening to this, you know, you've got a story to tell, you know, uh, get in touch with these three, uh, great, great leaders or shoot me an email and we'll be happy to, to help you in, in creating your, uh, your written masterpiece. Uh, again, the name of the book, Leadership with Legacy, the authors, Rich Barton, Carol Dosburn, Mike Elson, all certified master athletic administrators, all three giants in our profession. Um, we uh, do this every Tuesday, Tech Tips on the Educational AD Podcast. We also upload our episodes to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. We appreciate you listening. Uh, come back next Tuesday for another Tech Tip just about every day on the Educational AD Podcast. And one more time, Leadership with Legacy. Go to Amazon, get your copy, get a bunch of copies, and do a book study with your coaches. Uh, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Before we go, we do want to say thank you to all of our sponsors. Uh, we're not doing a full commercial load for this particular episode, but every single sponsor we have, I have used personally as a coach or an AD with one exception. You've heard me say this hometown ticketing. Uh, I retired just as hometown ticketing was coming into vogue, but I can tell you this, I've spoken with hundreds and hundreds of athletic directors across the country who swear by hometown ticketing. And that's good enough for me. So go to hometownticketing.com, start selling your tickets digitally. Hometownticketing.com. I want to say thanks to Huddle. Huddle's not just about football. As a football coach, I used it for years. But as an AD, I made sure our school was a huddle school. Go to huddle.com, check out their smart cameras, their mobile apps. Of course, there's analytics, but huddle.com. Turn your school into a huddle school. We also want to say thanks to Gipper. Uh, social media and branding is where it's at today. And if you're not doing it, you're missing the boat. Go to Gipper.com. They'll show you how to create world-class content for your school's social media channel. Use our podcast code ADPOD10 and you'll get 10% off. That's Gipper.com. We also want to thank Snap Mobile. Snap Mobile has an entire suite of platforms, each one designed to help you as an athletic director do your job better. Snap Manage will help you create a website. Snap Store is their um, platform to create custom um, spirit wear for your school. Um, Snap Raise is their fundraising platform, and they will help your school raise thousands and thousands of dollars. They even have a program where you can get your money before you actually start your fundraiser. Nobody else has that. Go to snapraise.com, snapraise.com. We also want to thank Final Forms. If you're looking for a great way to organize what you do as an athletic director, Final Forms can help you communicate with your uh, stakeholders. Uh, it's got reminders for parents about policies and physicals, can help your coaches with team communication, can help you with eligibility and rosters. Go to finalforms.com slash Jake to get started. We also want to thank Vital Signs Wall of Fame. Uh, if you're looking for the coolest way to display your school's record boards or your school's Hall of Fame, go to vitalsignswalloffame.com. They've got a mission to help bring your school's legacy to life. That's vitalsignswalloffame.com. We also want to thank Sideline Interactive, indoor scoring tables and video boards. Go to sidelineinteractive.com and schedule a live web demo and see their tables and boards in action. That's sidelineinteractive.com. And we want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. If you're not using a survey to take the pulse of your student athletes or your parents, you're really missing out. Go to athleticsurveys.com or email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next time on the Educational AD Podcast.